Hello, people. We are here with another podcast or YouTube show, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, this is Wrestling with the Devil, and this is a Lee Cole James Proctor podcast. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody. Uh, we have we're growing quick. You know, when a week and a half, we're we're up just about at uh, five hundred subs, James. Uh, yes. We have a video that has eleven thousand views. And growing every day and all the videos have been doing well are you surprised that we took off so quick yeah i definitely am because i know that most of these channels it you know it could take over a year to you know get to 500 or a thousand subs so it sounds like maybe we're doing something right and i think that having my other channel which is pretty successful right. uh, helped a lot you know and, and if i did this before i had my other channel i wouldn't be here you know, not right. like this. And, you know, we're looking, we're, our goal is to get to a thousand subs uh, within the next 30 days, people. So if you have not subbed to this channel, please do so. And today we're going to talk a very, about, about a very beautiful woman who had lived a very tragic life. And uh, we'll start off when she was young. And then we're going to give, uh, talk about what happened to her. And uh, who is this young lady right here? Yep, that's uh, Ms. Ms. Elizabeth, so Elizabeth Hewlett. Now she, and, and, and just so you know, people, when she was growing up, she didn't come from like, she's not one of these poor women. She was pretty well educated. Her mother was a nurse that owned a company. Her father uh, was a very successful man and he worked for a newspaper. She didn't come from a typical bad type background. She really had a leg up on life didn't she? Yeah, she, she really did. It, it seemed like that she had a, a pretty normal uh, childhood. Uh, you know, she, she did good enough in, in high school to, uh, you know, get, be able to go to the University of Kentucky. She's got a college degree in communications. Uh, you know, it's funny when you look at her life, uh, especially in the early days, you know, there was nothing in there that would tell me that she had any interest in wrestling you know that really came after uh, college like we did a show on nancy argentina she was interested in it from a young age you know right and, and a matter of fact um it is said that elizabeth was engaged before she even re met uh Rand randy poffo aka randy macho man savage is that correct yeah yeah i don't know much about that relationship but you know, look at, I think there's been a couple of uh, interviews with friends that she went to school with in college and, and she was uh, married to uh, someone before uh, Macho Man. Okay. And as you can see, she was a very beautiful woman and we'll get into, I met her and uh, I'll talk about her a little bit when we get to that point. Okay. Um, so here she is. Somehow she bumps into Randy Macho Man Savage. And then she tries to go to work. Uh, explain where what Randy Macho Man was doing at the time they met. Uh, the yeah. 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 So uh, basically, uh, you know, Randy is from a, you know, he has an interesting background himself. And so, you know, the Poffo family, Angelo Poffo um, started the, a an outlaw i'd say an outlaw uh wrestling uh group in kentucky and so you know basically outlaw meaning that wasn't part of the national uh wrestling alliance and so right. yeah he, he kind of got started there uh, my understanding was that uh after high school he he actually played some minor league uh baseball and he was pretty good at it, from what I understand. Yeah, too. exactly. And, yep. And then he ended up, um, you know, obviously, you know, the family was already involved in in wrestling, and you know, he had the size, uh, the persona, and everything, and you know, he got started in in Kentucky. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull something up here, and we're gonna show Elizabeth's first wrestling on the air. And it was with the Poffo organization. Um, and let's pull that up. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another sensational hour of International All-Star Wrestling. I'm your hostess, Liz Hewlett. We've got a fantastic program for you, bringing you some of the finest professional... Yeah, I think you're on mute, maybe, or I can't hear you. Okay, so at that time, she was involved with Randy Macho Man. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was married. A lot of people think that they got married on TV. It was a very famous wedding. But they mm -hmm. were married well before that, right, James? Yeah, exactly. They got married back in 1984. And so pretty much um, December of 84. Uh, I mean, that was before, uh, you know, uh, Randy. Before Macho Man actually went to the WWF for the first time, he joined in 85 and, you know, part of the agreement because he was a free agent and right. he was actually well known with uh, the ICW. And so he ended up uh, getting, um, you know, Vince McMahon, you know, saw him, you know, he was a big free agent per se. And, you know, my understanding is part of the agreement was that there would be some sort of role for Elizabeth. And he was a heck of a wrestler. And mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth came on the scene uh, shortly after he went to the WWE. Um, and then she showed up. And nobody realized how big it was going to be. Right. But there was a lot of signs of a lot of problems right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And one of them was... Uh, Randy Macho Man was a very savage, uh, was a very jealous man, wasn't he? Yeah, most definitely. You know, he, it, it seemed like just from what I could tell there, I mean, she, you know, she was pretty much under his thumb. You know, she would not, she really couldn't do anything without him. You know, very controlling, I guess, would be the word. That we and that sounds like her life with her choice of men, except men yes. one. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, when, and this is what we're going to talk about because she got involved with ver men on steroids, men raging all the time. Yeah. Uh, Randy Macho Man had, uh, uh, it was said that he would lock her up in uh, uh, locker rooms and stuff and yeah. didn't want her talking to nobody. Uh, he would watch her from the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved when she came down with him because at that point she, he can keep an eye on her. Um, so this relationship right off the bat was a relationship of a lot of jealousy um, yeah and he was in charge of it and you know one of the things that that was mentioned that or one of the things that was well known was that you know with him being in control of everything he would even give her a dirty look if she was you know in in that persona of Ms. Elizabeth you know being the manager of of Randy Savage, you know, if she did something wrong, said something wrong, even entered the ring wrong, he would give her a dirty look or say something to her about it. Because he and was jealous. Way, he didn't want anyone to see her, you know, you know, in, in different ways, I guess. And this picture right here is him with the family and Lenny, pa uh, Lenny Poffo. Now, I knew mm -hmm. Lenny Poffo, and he was totally different than his brother. Uh, yeah. he, he, he didn't go over as big as his brother, but he was uh, considered much smarter. He was mm -hmm. an avid reader. I remember seeing him in 1992 at WrestleMania in Indianapolis. And right. he uh, was sitting up in the audience all by himself before the match started yeah. and reading. That's And he was an avid reader. And he kind of stayed away from the other wrestlers. He was into his yeah. own little world. He didn't have – he was always a jobber. He was never more than a jobber. And, you know, a lot of he was Randy Macho Man's brother, but he just happened to be a jobber. He actually wrestled under the name most Poffo, you know, Lanny Poffo. Mm, yeah. You know, uh, so she's involved with the family now. And so everything is going OK for a while there. I mean, the abuse is there and stuff, but it's not it's not it's not crazy yet. But when it started right. getting crazy, it started affecting the corporation, the WWF. Yeah. It started the. Uh, the McMahons, especially Linda McMahon, was getting involved. Jerry McDivitt was getting involved. And uh, even Hulk Hogan was getting involved. Right. And it set off a series of events where it got pretty violent. Huh? Yeah, it really did. Yeah. And, 
you know, my understanding is I know that at one point, uh, in, you know, the Hogan's were in, in lived in Florida and believe, uh, Randy and his wife, uh, were in Kentucky maybe. And anyway, I know that they went to visit, they became close as a couple, yes. you know, the Hogan's and, um, Elizabeth and Randy. And so, you know, they went down there, had a good time and, and everything. And then, uh, I think what, or what I could tell happened was that, that she, Elizabeth just got tired of being controlled by, uh, Randy. And so, you know, since she had that, uh, friendship with Hulk Hogan's wife, then she ended up going, uh, down there. She left Randy, went down there. My understanding was that she didn't even tell Randy she was going and, and then he went Randy, nuts looking for her. And then Randy got really, uh, and I'm going to tell you in 1992, uh, um, when I met, uh, I met Elizabeth, uh, when I met uh, Vince McMahon and we were going on to Phil Donahue's show, Elizabeth showed up and she was with me, my brother. She was in the limousine with my brother when it was going back to Stanford. Very beautiful woman, very quiet, very quiet. But at that time, uh, Linda McMahon uh, mentioned that she was having trouble with her husband. And my brother Tom knew the whole story and he told me. Mm. And uh, they became involved. Uh, then he ran off with the... Uh, hiding from him with his, with Hogan's wife and um, mm -hmm. right before, uh, and she left him in 92. Right. And, and then in, uh, right before WrestleMania in 93, mm -hmm. um, Randy found out that Hogan would not tell her, tell him when he was, she was hiding down there. And yeah. he did this to Hogan. Want to explain that? Yeah. So I, th I know there were a couple of instances um, I know there was one that was kind of semi uh, part of the maybe part of the show, but the other one was he actually went down to Florida to look for her. Somehow uh, he found out that she was staying with the Hogan's and and he went in there, barged into the house and he got into an altercation with um, Hulk Hogan and, you know, and. And, and the funny thing is, to this day, this is mm -hmm. how banging Hulk Hogan is. To this day, Hulk Hogan will still say it was only part of the show. It <laughs> wasn't part of the show. A matter of fact, uh, yeah. Jim Cornette, um, who it has another podcast on here, mm -hmm. he's been, he was around. He's been around forever. And my brother, too, he was there when this incident happened. Uh, and he heard it all around the locker room everywhere. Right. That, that Randy punched out Hulk and the Hulk showed up at the wrestle uh, mania won his title in 93. And mm -hmm. that black eye that he had was from macho man. So right. don't let guys fool you. Not many people messed with Randy macho man, did they? No, no. And he was definitely, um, a, you know, he was a very, uh, strong man, very brutal. I mean, when you look at Hulk Hogan, obviously he's, he's a big guy, but you know, he, you know, wrestling, I, I would say that uh, Macho Man was actually probably a, great, a Macho bit Man better was athlete. A, Macho Man was a great athlete. Hulk yeah. Hogan was a, big, was a big guy that was an okay athlete. That's yeah, how that's I, what I, I, I – exactly. Was. That's what I was trying to so, say, yeah. So you have uh, – one was a, uh, was a much tougher man, um, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody knew he was tougher than Hogan. Yeah. You know? And and people to this day would say, no, there's no way Macho. Yes, he did. And yeah. Jim Cornette, you can go to that. Uh, you can go to his show and listen to it. Um, in the information, I'll put the show and the clip so people can go watch that on yeah. um, Jim Cornette's uh, channel. Um, OK, so Linda McMahon was heavily involved, too. Linda McMahon wanted to split them up. She knew it was coming volatile. She knew it right. was no good for the company. Right. And uh, so she left. She left her husband, mm -hmm. she left the company, she got divorced, yeah. and she met another man down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, right after this, his name was Carrie, Lub I think Lub Lubetsky was his name. And this is him right here. I'm not going to show you with his family. But then Elizabeth left him because uh, she wanted to get back into the wrestling. 
And uh, I guess uh, Randy Macho Man called her back in, and she she worked with Randy when she first got back to the WCW, which was right. a new organization at that time that was giving Vince a running a run for his money. Uh, right. So she went back there, and um, she didn't meet and hook up with him. She hooked up with who? Uh, Lex Luger. Okay, and explain to us who Lex Luger was. Yeah, so uh, Lex Luger was uh, basically a, started off as a football player. Uh, he he had played for oh, who was that? that I it can't remember. Matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think it was the Packers he played. I know he did some stuff with okay. Canadian Football League, but anyway, he, you know, he came out of uh, Florida. He was part of the NWA Championship Wrestling out of Florida, part of Crockett Promotions as well, and just he became the United States Heavyweight Champion, I believe, in the early nineties. And here's some pictures of them together, uh, right? And I just wanted you guys to see that. And yeah. so, um, once again, she got involved with a man that was pretty brutal. Would yeah. You, and explain what was going on on her first tour back. Randy Macho Man had said accepted it. He had no issues, never confronted never confronted Luger about it. At that point, he got over her. Right. So they both went their separate ways. So yeah, they had no problem working together at that time. No, no. And that was something that uh, I know that he still uh, cared about. Uh, Liz and uh, you know he wanted to you know help her professionally but you know as far as a uh, relationship goes you know you're right they kind of went their separate ways so there okay. wasn't any issues and so when she bumped back and joined in 96 she was uh, she first started off as the manager of Savage and Hulk Hogan but there were no ties Right. Uh, basically, she started having an affair with Luger, who was a married man at that time. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, I believe pretty crazy is that in the apartment complex or the neighborhood that Lex Luger lived um, with his wife, he actually had another uh, townhome or, uh, you know, apartment in the same place or same complex where he would see Liz. And and she went she went overseas with uh, with him and never showed up on the card. Uh, right. Never, you know. Basically, they were overseas, and at that time, they started phasing her out. So I guess that once again, her relationship with a man was affecting the organization. Would you say that? Yeah, I, I, it definitely was. And then you know, I noticed just you know if you look back at her career. Going back into the into the eighties, it seemed like she would be involved, and then she would be gone for a couple of years or whatever, and then come back. And so, you know, my understanding was it definitely affected, um, you know, what was going on with the, you know, WWF. And at that time, they had a big feud going on between Sting and Lex Luger, mm -hmm. and when and when they did the matches overseas. She didn't even come out. She wasn't a part of it, even though these matches were huge. So exactly. That gives you an idea that they were just phasing her out because there was a lot of friction. Once again, you had another jealous man with her mm -hmm. and another guy that was very possessive. Uh, right. But this one, uh, it seemed, did a lot more than Randy did to her. Would you say that? Yeah, and he he had he had serious drug issues even when performing. He um, was besides being possessive. Even if you look at um, before she died, I mean there were incidents of domestic violence. You know, Lex Luger got arrested, and we're going to go, gonna go over one of those incidents. Yeah. So, so on April eight, uh, so on April nineteenth, two thousand and three. Uh, Elizabeth was involved in a domestic dispute with uh, Lex Luger, and they were in a townhouse in Marietta, Georgia. And uh, they came, the police showed up. She mm -hmm. had two black eyes. She was, yep. she was bruised all up. Right. And uh, lo and behold, uh, Lex Luger got arrested, got yep. one charge with a misdemeanor and released on $2,500 bail. Right. And uh, 
Then two days after that, this is how this guy was out of control. And two days mm-hmm. after that, Lucas, uh, Luger was arrested driving under the influence. Right. He rented another car. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was driving a Porsche at that time. Uh, right. His eyes were bloodshot. He was totally out of it. Uh, yeah. He had, he, his, his driver's license, he could not find it. On top of mm-hmm. that, he had a nine millimeter. And the cops found him in the vehicle, high and drunk with a nine millimeter. <laughs> right. Pretty mm. scary in itself. He had no insurance, yeah. no insurance on the car. His tags no. were expired. Yeah. I mean, uh, Luger also was, he was, and his license was suspended because he didn't uh, show up in court. Yeah, for, exactly. For previous thing. So yeah. this, this man had no, uh, no respect for the law whatsoever. He acted like it, he was just one of these big e- egotistical guys that actually yeah. like everything around him didn't matter except him. Didn't right. Matter. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Let's show his, uh, and this is, uh, his mug shots when he was arrested. Um, and so we, let's, so a month after this happened, explain what happened with Elizabeth, uh, when she was with him. And yeah. we, we could talk about what he says and then we could talk right. about the coroner's report We'll Mm -hmm. pull that up and we'll explain what you know about that. Yeah. So, so if you remember, so let's just like, we, we talked about on April 19th, 2003, that was when uh, Lex Luger got arrested for domestic violence. And she dies in May of an overdose. Right. So on May 1st, she died. So actually on April 21st, he got Luger got arrested again for DUI and he got in an accident. And so that was the 21st. And 10 days later on May 1st is when uh, Elizabeth, Ms. Elizabeth Liz died uh, from a combination of prescription drugs, a variety of them, and alcohol, you know, vodka, basically. And and in his uh, statement, he said that he was at the microwave cooking. She got yeah. up and stood next to him, uh, mm-hmm. and then she was fine. And uh, uh, he she went to sit down, and he he went back to the couch, and she was unconscious. And yeah, and he did a uh, he did a lousy job. He, first thing he did is he he claims he called the nine one one. Then he was he did not know how to give uh, CPR, even though he was trying. Yeah. Okay. So explain what happened when the police and the paramedics showed up. Yeah. So when they, you know, when they showed up, she was, she was pretty much already, um, she was already um, cold. And so uh, he, she was already what? uh, Cold. She had started. Yes. She was already. uh, So she coded out at that time. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, but in the house, though, they actually arrested him. What I'm not sure of if if he got arrested at that moment or later, but, you know, at the time, they the police found... Uh, well, I, well, I know the answer to that, so let me give that yeah. part. Yeah. Okay, so he went outside while they were working on her in the inside. And yeah. then they took her away, so he was under the assumption that she was going to make it. Right. But by that time, by the time she got in the ambulance, she was gone. Right. And, and she wasn't going to make it. But right. And then he got upset because they would not let him back in the house. Mm. And then they went in the house and found a three month supply of steroids, a three month supply of painkillers, yeah. all sorts of medications. I mean, and, and that's the one thing he did. He always bought everything in three month supplies. Yeah. So uh, they had tons of drugs in the house to get as high as they want. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and they, and they were alcoholics also. Yes. Um, so I, I just want to throw that in there. You take it from there, my man. Yeah, no. So anyway, they had, like you said, they had found uh, the steroids of uh, synthetic growth, hip, uh, synthetic growth hormones, testosterone, Xanax, um, uh, hydrocodone, oxy, Codone. And so, um, you know, she had, uh, you know, when, when we look at the, 
uh, coroner's report, the autopsy report, you know, we could go into details, but, you know, basically uh, she could have survived this if, if he had been, you know, he just need to have uh, contacted authorities um, earlier. And let me, okay, so now I'm going to describe this right here. Reported death, it was on Thursday, May 1st, like you said, James. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, uh, at 645, they received the 911, and uh, it was a 42-year-old white female. They advised yep. the victim had been taken to Wellstar Keenstone Hospital and was pronounced dead at that location. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the arrival of the hospital, when she arrived, uh, he advised the, uh, the victim was low, he, uh, when the detective came in, they told her, told the detective that he was located. She was located in one of the rooms, but she already passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, emergency room advisor stated the victim victim had arrived in full arrest into the emergency room. EMTs that first arrived on the scene found the victim in full arrest and initiated CPR. Uh, EMS personnel had uh, intubate, intubated the victim at the scene, started an IV line, transported her. To the emergency room where the advanced medical intervention was started but proved unsuccessful you know they tried to bring her to life but at that time she was too she was gone mm -hmm. they just did their uh their duty yeah and uh the victim was laying in the striker uh frame stretcher in the trauma room this is with the police officer he's she's a white female is covered with a white sheet the sheet is re removed and exposes the victim the victim's uh, shirt and bra had been cut away by emergency personnel. EK, EKG pads uh, right. were, were on her torso, uh, and there were IV sites noted for the anti-cubital uh, when they tried to bring her back to life. The C collar was placed around her neck, and an ET tube exits her, her mouth. Yeah. A closer examination of the victim's head is made. Uh, nothing, nothing at that point. Uh, they could see before the uh, autopsy. So, right. So let's, you, you describe the autopsy now. Yeah. So, and, you know, I do work in the medical field. I'm not a doctor, but, you know, I have, uh, have knowledge of, of medicine, general medicine. And so uh, basically, as I said, as you mentioned, she's 42 years old. Um, the, there was nothing really when you, when, as far as the postmortem examination, there wasn't really uh, anything uh, remarkably wrong with her. You know, there were a couple of things, and, and we can get into that at the, I think it's at the bottom, but along with the uh, toxicology report. But, but nothing you know, was there that was uh, life threatening to her. She was actually in pretty good health. Yeah, she, she was in uh, definitely in pretty good health. There was a couple of things that was interesting to me. Uh, they I believe it's a little bit further down. I wonder no, just, just tell us what, what they are. Yeah, so a couple of things that was, I guess, the postmortem. Uh, yeah, if you could go up just a little bit. I wanted to, yeah, right okay. there. Yeah, so... The postmortem autopsy findings. To me, this was a little interesting. I don't know if if everyone will feel the same way. So the second item was talking about the hyalur lymph node showing cauciating granulomas. And so basically uh, what, what they were looking for, normally when you have that, that means you either have some sort of fungus or you have tuberculosis, but she didn't have neither. So that was kind of weird. And then the pancreas showing fibrosis. The only thing I wanted to point out on that is that's usually a precursor to someone that's uh, been drinking alcohol a lot. Right. A lot of alcohol. And exactly. At and that the, time, she was a, she, at that time she was a she was a blown out alcoholic. At, at that right, time. right. But you know her liver and all that was fine, and so she could have definitely, um, if she'd stopped drinking, it wouldn't have progressed. And then uh, the fourth thing on there, talking about the uterus, uh, yeah. what's interesting on that, all that is, is a lot of women have that, it's fibroid cyst in the uterus. And she had a, and then there was a problem with her fallopian tube. And that again was uh, dilated, which means there were 
cysts. So the thing that that tells me is that it would have been very unlikely that she could have ever had children. Right. So she either had maybe a tubal pregnancy in her past. Maybe she had uh, the other thing she could have had. She could have been born with it or uh, she could have either had an abortion at one point in her life, which there's no evidence of that or uh, sexually transmitted disease, which I've never, there's no evidence of that, but it can cause uh, those items. And in that world, would it surprise you? No, no, it, it you, definitely. You know, these are men that run, run around with all sorts of women. I can only imagine what kind of women Lex Luger, who was an egotistical <laughs> maniac, uh, you know, what he ran around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the toxicology, I think this is the most interesting part. And if you look at, so there's five uh, items listed. Uh, the first two items are just, those are muscle relaxers. Right. And it's possible those were given to her, you know, I'm almost thinking a lot of that probably just came from Lex Luger himself because he seemed to be a walk-in uh, pharmacy. But I think the first uh, the first two items are muscle relaxers. They weren't really weren't really at too high of a level, you know, or moderately high. It was, but the third item was more of a of an antihistamine uh, for for allergies, and then the hydrocodone, uh, that was definitely not at what I would call any sort of toxic level. But right. what was, what was interesting is normally you don't just have hydrocodone. Normally it's, it's, it's usually in a tablet with, um, acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, but they just mentioned hydrocodone. So right. not sure, sure why, but the, well, I'm sure Lex got the best of everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. he didn't get any of that stuff mixed together. He got, <laughs> he got the top of the line stuff, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. And the last item is really what what did it. So uh, so you how have the drunk was she, How drunk was she? Yeah, she was at a 0. .2999, which is uh, about four times, almost four times the legal limit. And wow. So that you told been, four times the legal limit. With mm -hmm. muscle relaxers in her body, which you should yes. not even take with pain mm -hmm. medication because they're both suppressants that, the, that yeah. they, they affect the lungs. Right. And, uh, so here she is. She's taking uh, muscle relaxers, hydrocodone, even though those aren't going to kill her by herself. Right. Four times the legal limit. See, and this is why a lot of people found it. She's four times the legal limit. But he's saying that she got up and walked over to the microwave. Mm -hmm. she even it really be capable sense. with all that stuff in her body? No, she would have been at that level. She would have been um, not able to walk. She would have been falling down if she could get up. Most likely she would have passed out at that point. And mixing that with the other uh, medications is, is really what did it. Even the alcohol, she could have probably survived that if it wasn't for, you know, the other medications that was in with it. I don't believe that she was this, able to get up. This is a tiny woman, 115 pound woman. Exactly. What that was like eight. Yeah. That'd be like eight. Uh, so she's drinking vodka. That'd be like eight shots. So it's either a cocktail with a bunch of vodka in it, but it's basically with her, with her weight and all of that, at, uh, to get to the 0.299, you have had to drink eight shots in an hour. And, and uh, it, the cause of death was acute toxicity, multiple mm -hmm. drugs, and exactly. they ruled it an accident. But mm -hmm. a lot of the police officers did not believe that, are the detectives. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, you can't prove it. I mean, this is, you can't just blame him for her taking what she's taken. She has to. She, She's a responsible person too. Has to be a right. responsible person. So, yeah. but the thing that the police had issues with is her getting up and walking to the, or even being active because she was so far out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking to fall down drunk at that point. Yeah, exactly. Even if you weren't passed out at the at that time. So, yeah. So there's a lot of questions there, but the, and then the cops wouldn't let him in the house, and. To this day, he's angry about that. Yeah, but it was a crime. So what happens is that when you're the police come in, 
Uh, the thing I know that you have to have a warrant to go in, but if there's a situation like that where you're being asked to come in because someone is uh, basically if someone has in her situation, that's considered an active crime scene. So they have all right to go in and then anything they saw within view, they can use that as evidence without a warrant. You know, obviously they may have got a warrant later to go into the other parts of the, of the room, but really it was an active crime scene at that point because she died. And, and so you got this man here that's involved with the death. Uh, mm -hmm. He's in the house. Uh, yeah. The police think he's not being totally honest with them. Exactly. Um, and he want, did he wind up getting in any trouble for the amount of drugs that they found there? Yeah. So uh, basically uh, what happened with that, it, let's see, he was, so he was charged with 13 felony counts of drug possession is that all? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 13. And he was released the following day on $27,500 bail, which, man, that seemed kind of low for 13 felony counts. Well, usually uh, you won't even get released for 13 felony counts. Yeah. You know, they would hold you over to trial or give yeah, you a exactly. very high bail. Yeah, exactly. He probably had good lawyers, too, because, you know, they said that her death was eventually ruled accidental, which we just saw in the autopsy report that was in, I believe, July 31st of 2003. So later, uh, Luger actually pleaded guilty to the charges and was fined $1,000, got five years probation in order to take periodic drug tests. So he kind of got off pretty good. Did he really ever come off of this whole thing remorseful, do you think? Well, no. I mean, I, I get suspicious because, you know, he you know, supposedly turned his life to God and all that. You know, you hear that a lot when things like that happen. Maybe. Oh, when maybe, crime, listen, I, I do the mob podcast. Yeah. And every one of those guys that rat and go to prison and get out, everyone mm -hmm. that goes to prison, they all find God and you yeah. know, hallelujah. <laughs> um, I found God and I'm sorry, yeah. Elizabeth, that I wasn't there for you. I'm sorry yeah, that you were I sitting know. on the couch four times drunker than a normal human being. And uh, I really didn't. It's hard that. to believe it, you know, to be honest. I don't think he's you know, remorseful. And then, you know, Luger had some sort of issue with his neck that he got some paralysis for a while. I think he's, you know, well, here he is he's right in now. a wheelchair. He's yeah. Current, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, look at his eyes. I mean, you know, you live that life and you put that amount of stuff in your body mm -hmm. between the painkillers and between the, uh, the steroids. Yeah. When you get older, your body just can't handle it. Everybody reacts differently. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but he, he was he, obvious on steroids. Look at him when he was younger, how oh, muscle no Well, know. look what they found in this house. That says yeah. it all. Well, that they were all on steroids. You weren't in the WWE if you weren't on steroids. No, no way to nobody. Do that otherwise. You know, people uh, I challenge anybody to find maybe Lenny Poff, Lenny Poffo, and that's why he was a jobber. Uh, yeah. okay, so okay, so that happens, a tragedy, the poor woman's gone. Uh She's exactly my age if she was still alive. Um, yeah. The man that she divorced, the lawyer uh, from Florida, uh, right after that, got married, wound up having a family yeah. of, of kids and uh, turned his life around. But she seemed more dedicated to these, uh, a very bad world of wrestling. And, you know, if you watch our shows and we discuss, this is another tragedy. Mm -hmm. In the world of wrestling, wouldn't you say, James, this is just one of those yeah. things involved with the aura of wrestling? Yeah, it is. I mean, it, and there's dozens of these stories, unfortunately, but, you know, I think it's important that people understand that. And, and I know a lot of a lot of this is out there, but uh, I don't know how deep a lot of the shows get into it. And so we're trying to take it maybe a little bit different angle or more of a deeper angle. And so hopefully well, we're we, we giving want some to talk information. about everything because if you watch those uh the, sh the shows on vice and stuff they yeah. touch it you know i dealt with the people on vice and 
when they t- when they do an interview or something, they break so much stuff up by the time it gets it goes through their lawyers and whatever they go. Oh, yeah. So they leave a lot of stuff out. We said a lot of stuff here that we can get away with. Like maybe they couldn't mention the name of her husband. Right. Uh, or, 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 or that was down in Florida. But, you know, people knew she was a lawyer. He was a lawyer and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you'll wonder if that was the maybe the couple of years in her life where, you know, maybe she was fine. Maybe Randy picked up the phone and said, hey, you know, come over here to the WCW. Uh, yeah. We're down here now and uh, we're starting a new run. And then she went there. And what did she meet? Someone hmm. a lot worse than Randy Savage. Yeah, exactly. And let's explain what happened to Randy Savage and what year it happened right there. There's Randy Savage when he's older. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like that towards the end, he kind of changed his life. Um, You know, it seems like that, you know, he he ended up with, got remarried. Yep. And and seemed to, you know, was doing stuff acting. He's doing some stuff with uh, Hollywood, with acting and everything he's got you know his voice is so iconic you know and and then and this so, and then this happened and this happened explain what happened to him yeah so so basically he was uh with his wife uh they were driving uh early one morning uh and this was on May 20th 2011 you know 58 years old 58 and then years, and it happened uh in Not, Seminole, Florida, and he just had a sudden heart attack. And it was nine years after the fact of uh, of Elizabeth dying. Yeah, exactly. So it was, uh, yeah, about, yeah, or eight years. So, yeah, it was May 2003 for Liz and May 2011 for, um, for Randy. And it's just one of those, you know, you look at, we'll talk about three people here more wrestling mm-hmm. tragedy you got luger who's in a wheelchair and he gets yeah. a maniac not a very nice guy uh i don't know mm-hmm. how he is now if he found the lord only he knows that i'm not right. gonna judge him but i'll judge him how he was then exactly uh, and yeah just like people he, judge me when i was a criminal that's right just- and right and he uh but randy had um they found that he had enlarged heart advanced coronary disease i mean i think he was more than 90 percent blocked in his arteries uh and they did um that he they found a small amount of alcohol but that was probably from the night before and you know it wasn't that much yeah and, so, and he still looked big maybe he was still yeah. doing steroids it's hard to get away from that especially when you got that built yeah exactly um, he what he did was doing prescription painkillers i mean he had the hydrocodone in his system yeah and they and it's it's amazing. This is why we talk about wrestling and the, mm-hmm. the, the way these wrestling wrestlers suffer. And uh, when they get out of wrestling, they become a lot of them are addicted to drugs because they are on painkillers, and the majority of them are on painkillers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's it's just another sad story, a wrestling story of this beautiful woman mm-hmm. uh, who was raised correctly. Yes, got involved in a. Re- the last thing you want your daughter to get involved with, and we learned this with Nancy Argentina, is wrestling. Yeah. You know, it's just not a very nice place for women to be around. No, it's such a high testosterone bunch of alpha males just, um, control. you know, it's, I don't think anyone would want their daughter in a, you know, in, in a locker room with those people or around them at all. And people say when she was first with Randy, she was happy. Uh, yeah. You know, and she smiled a lot. I remember mm-hmm. when I met her in 1992, that poor woman looked like she was so depressed. There was no smile mm-hmm. on her face. Um, yeah, she was miserable being just controlled. She couldn't do anything. And then when she wasn't involved, uh, that was the other thing. He, She had to stay at home. He'd be out on the road. She wasn't allowed to go anywhere. And this was after she wasn't as involved in the... You're talking when she was with who? Yeah, I think he might have been in Japan or wherever. Are you talking about Luger or are you talking about... Uh, with, I'm uh, sorry, um, uh, Randy Savage. And I'm sure it was that way with Luger too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, because he was still wrestling while she was not around. So it's obvious right. that you know she started a romantic relationship with him. Right. And, uh, you know, you look at this beautiful woman right here and you say to yourself, 
it just isn't, she's so beautiful and yet she's attracted mm -hmm. to these dudes mm -hmm. these alpha males that are uh swelled up with steroids uh raging and unfortunately she spent a majority of her life being abused by these maniacs and yeah that story isn't it yeah that's that's the saddest part of it she she should be alive today i think she would have been if she wasn't in that situation and it's just sad um all that she she went through and came from humble beginnings, a good family, and just ended up in a bad situation, made bad choices, and specifically choosing bad men. And, uh, you know, she was such a big part of the WWF at that time. I mean, mm -hmm. Elizabeth and Randy Macho Man were, the only thing bigger than them was Hulk Hogan. You right. Know, those were the two, two, those were the two that were... That pretty much, you know, Randy, what the, I don't know if you remember the Slim Jim commercial. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that famous commercials. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a very sad thing. And Lex Luger was making a lot of money. I mean, to buy that, that amount of drugs and drive, he was driving around in the Porsche. And it's like he was making, he was making uh, good money too. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I appreciate you doing this story with me. And um, yeah, thank you. People, leave your uh, remarks underneath this when I drop this video and James and I will be doing other videos like this. So we just got approved from StreamYard to start doing lives, James. So I think I'm going to do a live this week. Are you going to be able to make it? Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Just tell me when I'll be there. And we're going to find a topic for the live. We're going to introduce ourselves, talk to people about the live. So okay. please, if you're, if you have not hit the like button, hit the like and hit the reminder because when we go live, you'll get the reminder that it's going to be a live show. And we're going to have some good conversation. Um, yeah. And I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, if, on this video, please hit the like. Uh, please hit the, uh, you know, um, if you're not a sub, please sub. And yeah. um, we appreciate everybody watching this. Um, yeah. And once again, James, thank you for being here. Thank you. And uh, we'll it's drop a pleasure as always. And we're going to be doing videos every couple of days, people. We're going to try yep. to build this channel as quick as we can, build our library. And uh, we talk, We have a list of other things, subjects. The one thing about wrestling, there's so many subjects. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make movie after movie. Look at That's why that series Vice is so, po po uh, is so popular. Right. You know, and we're going to get into other things, tragedies, deaths, maybe mm -hmm. even a good story. A happy yeah. wrestling story, which are very hard to find, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are. They <laughs> are fun. <laughs> okay, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all. And uh, look for, an, uh, in a few days, look for another video. And remember, in a day or two, we're going to be doing a live. Have the reminder set so you know we're coming live. And it's probably going to be midday, maybe Tuesday uh, or, or Wednesday. Let me end this real quick. Take care, people.